Hi, you're watching Just Chit Chat lah. And I'm Zan Azli. And as you know, this is a kind of like a talk show interview slash interview show where I speak to interesting people that I meet. And uh, recently, I met up with Anas Alam Faisli. He's kind of like a, I don't know, sociologist, but he calls himself a generalist. Generalist? Yeah. Uh, uh, I know him from, you know, being involved in politics, but he's actually not a politician and he's really not really involved in politics. He's just more interested in current affairs and nation building and things like that. And he wrote a very popular book. This is it. Rich Malaysia, Poor Malaysians. Uh, it's been out a few years and it's been updated. Uh, I had his book when it was launched. I got his book when it was first launched. And when I met up with him, he actually gave me the updated version. And he signed it somewhere here. Right? Uh, so we spoke about the country, the state of Malaysia, about education, about immigration, about employment, about pollution, about environment, and even a little bit about politics. Um, we had our chat outdoors uh, and it was raining quite heavily. So the sound of the rain in the background is a little bit loud, but it's all right because you can actually hear everything we say. Uh, and our chat is pretty audible uh, and it was very interesting too. So. Let's cut straight to it right now. Are you actually a social scientist or are you an economist? I would rather say I'm a concerned citizen. A concerned citizen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In my career, professionally, I'm, I, work, I spent 15 years more than that. So I was doing project management. Investment evaluation, capital, etc. So when I was in Malaysia, uh, I did my master's in project management. So it was an engineering-based industry. Mm. So I have to, you know, after that, so I did master's in project management. Uh, and then, when I'm going for the corporate ladder, mm. I thought, oh, I need a degree in business. So I did the doctorate in business. So that's when uh, I started to do economy. I started to engage in this think tank of Icecon. Uh, we study mostly how to income and how we can make Because at that moment, my interest was mainly uh, petroleum resources. So how do we use this petroleum resources? Uh, how are we managing it? Uh, and what are the distribution like? So from there, my interest spurred more to understand how this resource has been used in the country and where we are now. And from there, uh, I started to be engaged in education with the Chief Coordinator. Ah, okay. So my interest is quite diverse. Uh, they tend to call me you know, like a generalist. Rather than, <laughs> rather than an economist or an author or a professional or something like that. But your, your oil and gas uh, career is still going on? Uh? Uh, now I'm doing oil and gas and also consulting. And construction as well. Okay, okay. Teach for the niece, that means you know uh, Shafizan Johari, lah, AK. AK, uh, AK Zame, we were part of the team. Are you still AK? Uh, now the younger generations are running the show. Oh, I see. You guys started it, lah. Uh, along with Zame, Shafizan, and AK. Long time ago. Uh, it was we started by Zame and Hasmita. We joined the show. Oh, it's getting really rain. <laughs> Let's hope the rain will slowly <laughs> die off. Uh, but it's okay, right? For now, really. Okay, lah. <laughs> okay. In your book, Rich Malaysia, Poor Malaysia, right? You talk a, book, a lot about education as well. And since you started with it, teaching, <laughs> teach for, for teach, teach for the needs, right? Uh, one of the one of your ideas that I find very appealing when it comes to education. He said, you talk about free education, right? I am a supporter of free education daripada kindergarten right up until the Menara Gading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, normally bila orang discuss free education, they would like to compare with Cuba, they compare with countries that offer Aha. free education. Like Germany. Now, but I think the main uh, idea, this notion of free education, they're going to compare to Malaysia. Right. 
So in the book, I outline eight reasons, lapan sebab kenapa we have to fund higher education. So among many, it's an investment. So simple calculation lah, macam if you sponsor the education all the way to Menara Gading, like you said, dia punya tax. If kalau dia seorang pekerja yang very normal, eh, increment setahun lima peratus, starting pay dua ribu. Tiga puluh tahun kerja, dia bayar cukai lagi banyak daripada government sponsor dia punya education And that's just one of the eight reasons yeah. Lagi tujuh reason kena baca <laughs> That's right <laughs> No, no, but, but I, I, think, I, I think that's true lah Then there's an the issue of PTPTN Kan, uh, now PTPTN, a lot of people are defaulting on their loans they, they're, not, they're not paying their loans Why are they not paying their loans? You think? Oh, it's uh, purely because uh, aku the salary Now Gaji yang kita dapat, basic salary Roughly 2000-2500 Masa kita, when I start work 2002 That was the basic salary Like 40 years later, tak berlupa It's still the same thing? Same thing lah, but if you use 2000 uh, Ringgit to survive now, compared to 15 years ago Is 2000 ringgit, maybe value dia dah tinggal 500 ringgit je So, the income and the cost of living is People voice out opinions. They will be criticized and say, "Hey, don't do that. Tunggu lah, buat waktu mengundi, and then go and undi." So, how do you want to overcome that that challenge? So, this is mostly uh, culture. I mean, kita was from Malayu, uh, I Malaysian generally. We came from a feudal feudal society. So, moving to go out to be able to voice, to be able to voice out, and for the past 50 years, we equate the current government as the government. <laughs> kan? uh, so, so we don't know anything else. We don't know anything else. Yeah. Kan? So moving out, education, slow by slow, step by step, we are going to get there. Because to be fair, kita tengok kami lagi after the Second World War, kan? uh, 50 years later, the first 50 years, uh, not just Middle East, Asia juga. The first 50 years, semua diperintah oleh same party, so, nationalist party, normally nationalist party. Are changing to party system, but it will take time. Sebab the self censorship is very strong. Kita pergi dekat uh, tempat kerja kan. Bila kita bercakap aktif je, 
boss panggil kan? Cakap lebih-lebih ni kenapa? Eh, 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 eh. Yeah. And sad to say, sometimes uh, the company is a multinational company. <laughs> We should be more open, right? We should be more open. <laughs> But it's self-censorship because the culture and the, we've only known one government. So uh, And then uh, ayat-ayat macam uh, kita kena berterima kasih kepada government. Where else? People forget that the government is there to manage our right. Kita lahir kat Malaysia, kan? Yeah? We are born here. So, we have, we are entitled to this land. Yeah. We are entitled to the oil and gas that is in this land. So, the government function is to manage the wealth. For the us. Money. <laughs> For us. Yeah. So, people tend to forget that. So, slowly we will we'll go there. And they will make the government more accountable for what they do. Because they are managing our resources. It's not... They are, they are working for us. They are working for the people. That's the mentality that we should be... But, but you see that we are moving towards that. Lah. Ah. You see the steps. Because I feel like I'm actually very impatient. <laughs> Because 50 years is actually nothing in human development. Kan? Yeah. That, that's another problem when you see... Uh, it's like it's about policy. People like to, that, to do policy five years in the planning. You buat UPSR kan? Tukar konsep baru, KBBSM something yang result baru keluar ni. So we have five years to do do all this. Mula 6A, sekarang semua 1A, 2A, semua nangis-nangis kan? Ha, ha, ha. It's a good step sebab nak buat critical thinking. Yeah. But then belum apa-apa, dia dah now nak abolish. Yeah. Abolish. yeah. So what's happening? Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> They're not going to invest the time to, to see through lah. Ha, macam contoh Finland. Ha. Now they are number one in education. But, Getting there took them 30 years. Dari 30 tahun punya planning yeah. that they plan out. And we keep changing things. So what channel has been always out. And then the, we have to find the right mixture lah. Yeah, Contoh yeah. Finland. Finland, the idea is uh, before 7 years old, tak boleh sekolah. And then they punya homework less than 30 minutes. So parents pun relax. Buku pun sikit. But they get a board. South Korea on the other hand, it's different. Hmm. 12 subjects, bawa oh, buku besar besar. So, student kerja bangunan dapat result tak bagus kan? Nah. And they still dapat number one. Yeah. So we have to find a solution for Malaysia. Yes, yes. What fits? Should we follow Finland or should we follow South Korea? Or you develop something of your own? Or we develop something in between. Yeah. Something like that. Sama macam ekonomi. Should we do follow American style or we follow European style or we follow China? We have to find the right mixture for this country because Malaysia is unique. Malaysia is the number one unique country in the world. That's another subject. We are unique in a way that nobody else can be. In what sense? We are a country of multi... multiple. <laughs> eh? We are multi-racial. Okay. We have a significant population that have roots from the India and China civilization, all the civilization world. We have the Malays that can uh, access that Indonesia, world most populous Muslim country. And we have Islam, so we can tap to the Islam world. And we are Western educated, we can speak English, so we can tap into the Western world. So Malaysians are like Cambodians. We can be at home in almost every country in the world. So imagine that potential if we unlock the potential. But that same thing is giving us identity problems. Huh? <laughs> so we have a choice. Either we take it as a weakness or we mold it as a strength and use diversity as our form of uh, where we can uh, be a better country. And people always like to compare like Indonesia, Philippines. I think that our the best comparison to Malaysia would be Australia. Hmm. Number one, the amount of population hmm. quite similar, 25 million, 30 million, and the amount of resources. They have nickel, copper. They also have petroleum. We have petroleum, and the amount of usable land in Australia. It's big country, but they are only yeah using uh, the coastal area. So. But the problem is, in Australia, the advantage in Australia, you can be, uh, you cannot be poor, and you cannot be ultra rich. In Malaysia, you can be super poor, and you can be nasty, nasty, super rich. 
Because I would prefer us to be like Australia, right. the, the system that we have now. Yeah. So there is not, there's not a bit wider gap. And Australia's GDP is five times larger than Malaysia. Mm. So that's that should be our norm. Yeah, that should be our what is it? Our our goal, no? Yeah, goal. yeah. Where should we be heading? That's our potential. We can be as big economy as Australia. Okay, recently you've also been uh, writing and discussing a lot about uh, environmental issues and sustainability when it comes to green technology, green industries and all that. Talk more about that. Why? Yeah, why? Okay, that's, that's interesting. You okay or not? This is very neat, put it. <laughs> as long as the voice is captured. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, that is very interesting, environment. My proposal in that article mm. is suggesting that we can use one stone to kill two birds. Stone number one is to kill all these environment issues. So we, when we adopt all these green technology, we will uh, hopefully better uh, solve our problems and environment issues. Second, the second bird is the economic benefit that will come out of it. So while saving environment, we can make profit. How? By becoming the technology leader in the region and by uh, being the one that is leading the, at the forefront of green technology. So the article talks in detail about the five key sectors that we can use. It. Number one is energy, how uh, the renewable energy, the energy efficiency can help us with the reward and at the same time save the environment. And then uh, transportation. Billion MRP. Yes. And then uh, on uh, construction, and then uh, on water and waste management. At the moment, waste management, we are only using landfill. Landfill, you can only use 5 to 10 years. And then you cannot use that land for 20 years. Many the amount that we lost. Yeah. So I think uh, I've recently written an article which will be published very soon. The title is Wither Malaysia. Where are we heading? A wish list for fundamental correction. So I have outlined wish list that I believe we did have. Uh, we can get out of this uh, depression. I can call it depression. I mean, typical Malaysians, they are now in depression. Everybody is uh, feeling where are we heading? Uh, what's happening to this country? Uh, how do we get out of this mess? So I'm outlining several solutions that I hope can bring us out from this depression. And this depression now. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, depression now. Um, you also talk about, you also talk about, uh, most recent is, uh, like you mentioned just now, uh, the starting salary for graduates. Okay. Right? Like you said, you and I, we both started working around the same time. And the starting pay was 2000 you know, It's still 2000 now. Yeah, and it's still 2000 now. Some, even, some industries even less. Yeah. Right? And, um, and I know that a lot of these graduates, because I teach at colleges and unis, and they're telling me, look, you want more pay, you want more pay. But then, they don't get jobs. And then people, the, the adults, accuse them of expecting too much. But to me, I don't think they are expecting too much. They're expecting just what they should be expecting at this point of time. Right? What are your thoughts? Uh, it's funny, you see, 90% Malaysian are salary and wage earners. Yeah. So when you have people asking for higher salaries, it's not the employers that is making noise. It's the 90% people are making noise. The employees! Are, the employees, <laughs> they're lambasting the idea. They say, what are you asking for? I started with 2,000 yards 15 years ago. I started 1,000 yards 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> What's the issue? So, the thing that people don't understand is the, that we, what we blind spot and that's what I've been saying for, for many years now, six, seven years now. Uh, the BNI pie, the gross national income pie, we're showing that only 25% goes to the pocket of the employees. 70% goes to the corporation profit. So we're just asking a bit from that pie, from the corporation profit to increase. This big part. So, if you look at OECD companies, we are 25%, they are at least 
50% on average. So we should be moving towards that. And, and part of it is salary. Our largest uh, economic growth uh, factor, driving factor, is still consumption. Mm. How do we drive consumption? We increase people's salary. So you it's called the virtuous economic cycle. You increase people's salary, they spend more. <coughs> you spend more, you drive growth. Corporation makes more profit. Government collects more taxes. Government have more money, they spend more on education. And the economy expands. So that's what we call the virtuous economy. And how do we get there? To make sure people have more money. Uh, which is better? One person with 40 billion ringgit, or 40,000 people with 10 million ringgit. Obviously the latter. They want 40,000 people who have 10 million in their account. They can spend and spend and spend. How much can one person spend 40 billion? How much can you spend? Breakfast? 5,000 ringgit breakfast every day? <laughs> 50,000 ringgit lunch? So when you write all this, <laughs> you share your ideas and all that, right? Who listens? Huh? Who listens? Um, well, I was told that they use this book in uh, Parliament Malaya. And sometimes in Parliament I hope, I'm not sure. Right. Um, and some of the ideas are slowly being captured. Policies here and there. I'm not sure. So every time I come up with an article, I will email or send it to all the parliamentarians. I send it to the NGOs. I send it to people active in the society. So I hope to get the ideas around. Uh, and I always tell people, you don't have to use my name. You can copy paste and do it. As long as somebody does something. You just take anything from the book, copy paste, you don't have to even put my name and use it in your uh, uh, This is Malaysia. Everybody wants to win and gain something. Come on! <laughs> I'll gain it when people use it. Uh, yeah. Are you are you active politically? No. I mean, people do associate you with politics, right? That's the thing in Malaysia. Again, uh, uh, the mentality. When you say something loud, when you say something vocal, you think people are political. Why can't you be a political and wanting to do good for your country? Yeah. That doesn't have to be politics. I know, it's 2016. Right, right? No, no, I totally agree. I totally agree, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a perception. And I think a lot of these changes that you, you talk about and you, you, know, you, you throw out and all that, it's all doable, all feasible, all possible. With the, the, the important thing is that no, what people we need want now to do is it. The intellectual clarity. Exactly. And the will. That's all. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Forward. And how do you change that? How do you change that? How do you improve that? One step at a time. You sound so patient. <laughs> we will get there. We will get there. I want it to get there during our time. <laughs> you don't think it's going to happen during our time? Oh, or you will? It, it will, will happen now. Yeah? The changes will happen. And before the changes happen, we have to be in the deepest dark hole because when that time happens, there's only one way. Uh, how good are you? Because you've got a daughter, I've got two daughters. You know, before I had kids, right? I thought it sucks money. You know, but yeah, so I hope it happens. Uh. Uh, and then another issue is we have to better empathy. Ah, yes. Better empathy. Uh, and then uh, we have to get more people to be interested. Because why apathy happens? Because people feel frustrated. Like you say, when people say voice out, people slam them, people don't want to listen. So people become, oh, it's not my problem. So when we have an active democracy where everybody counts, where people are able to participate more, then we would have changed that apathy to become empathy. And that's what we need now, going forward. Oh, there are so many issues to tackle, like, and all these are uh, fundamental issues like foreign workers. Mm. And people always misunderstand when right? I talk about foreign workers, then people will come. They are the ones that have built this country. We need to take care of them. Of course, we take care of them. But I'm just saying that we are uh, over-relying on our foreign workers, impacting our local workers. 
simple example. We have 200,000 Malaysians working in Singapore in 3D jobs. Dirty, dangerous, difficult. At the same time, we have 300,000 foreign workers working in Johor for the same 3D job. So what's wrong? So Malaysians can work in 3D job. The problem is the pay, the salary. In Penang, now they say I'm political because Penang did something good for foreign workers. Penang, what they did was they come out with an advertisement. Contract workers 1,300 or 1,500 ringgit for garbage collectors, local Malaysian community. 2,500 positions, 25,000 applications. So that's those uh, <coughs> are a positive step we, we should follow. I cannot accept to, uh, to when people say that Malaysians cannot work in the factory. Where are our Minakaran and Matila? So 70% of Malaysians with SPM and below, where are they going to work? Foreign, they are, foreign workers are competing directly with the jobs. <coughs> we are letting foreign workers competing directly with the most vulnerable 8.4 million Malaysians. Most vulnerable. And we are letting them fight. Nail to nail, tooth to tooth. Ah. And why are we letting them have that? And when we have a strong workforce, like Australia, you go there, all the workers are local. So you can have uh, skill building. You can have uh, brick layer level 1, level 2, level 3, and the salary increase. Yeah. Like in our oil and gas, all the welders, all the fitters, all the laborers are local Malaysians. Yeah. Now you go to Korea, all workers are local. People will argue, oh, Korea has 80 million population, we only 30 million. Uh, Australia, hey, 30 million population? Oops! So, we have to start uh, finding our will to do what's necessary to move forward. Uh, another thing that I found interesting, I mean, the last time we met, we were talking about the MRT and our public transportation system. Uh, you are saying that there is a much better and more efficient way to have a, a, a more efficient public transportation system rather than what we are building right now. No, the problem with MRT, uh, why it escaped public uh, objection or public uh, people are not like having a demonstration against MRT or mm. things like that because the public desperately needs a better public transportation system. So when you have an MRT, okay fine, we use it. How much does it cost? 120 million Okay. We use it, right? <coughs> but how can you spend 120 million for MRT? There is only uh, two, two uh, dual country uh, wider than your LRT. Even LRT 3 have bigger capacity. 120 billion for MRT and just for prime value alone. For Klang Valley Skipper Road. How much is 120 billion? It's half, almost half of our national budget for a year. And we are only spending just for MRT, where we can spread out the money. I mean, it shouldn't be 120 billion to begin with. It's like three times global standard. I mean, the, the whole system from contracting to procurement, it's an issue of governance and transparency. Let's say the cost is 30 billion, 40 billion. The 80 billion we can spend for BRT, the bus rail transit system. We can spend for intra rail, yeah. intra buses. We can spend for a lot more. The idea of a public transportation is to get you from point A to point B. You take MRT. You stay in, let's say, some remote station in Kutong. You have to Uber to get to a station or to get to the nearest bus feeding location. Then you take MRT, go to KL. You want to go to Shahalam? Go KL chain. Then go to uh, where's the nearest to Shahalam. You have to go at Planet Jaya and then take another Uber. We are not giving good coverage because we spend too much money on just one method of transportation. Where we are not solving all the problems. We should have uh, every transportation system complementing everything so that I can get out of my house without driving. Exactly. And 
all these issues, foreign worker, salary, right? uh, transportation, uh, affordable housing, these are the causes that cause the inequality. These are the things that cause the inequality, the gap. Hey, you do this research all by yourself? No, oh, uh, there's always a... Uh, we have blind spot. And then there's always professionals in each industry that will come and support. So the idea is, you know, before it gets public, uh, we'll be sent across uh, the industry, getting more input, uh, having more research, having more discussion, coffee, and uh, once it's uh, firm, then we shoot it up. And the book is a living document. Yeah. All those ideas are up for debate. In fact, I want it to be debated. In fact, I'm uh, planning for an intervarsity debate in March. Uh, we're hoping to attract uh, 40 debating teams. Intervarsity, uh, and we'll have them debate each topic in the book. So we need more ideas. So you're not saying yours is the end of all ideas uh, that you have no. for the country? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might be said, giving lousy ideas to everybody, I don't know. <laughs> Let's debate it. Yeah. <laughs> so you just need more people to just come out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I read on, uh, on healthcare recently. Uh. People are like, why are you writing on healthcare? Are you losing focus? What do you know about healthcare? Right. But I realize that people are not really talking about healthcare. People, everybody talk about education. Why? Okay, everybody have children. Yeah, so they experience it. They experience it. But nobody talks about healthcare. Or we, I can say minimal participation from the public discourse. Why? It's a tough subject. Yeah. You need to spend six years to become a doctor. And even then, it's not finished. You have to do a few more years to become to specialize in something, right? So I try to uh, do an A to Z article on healthcare, and I bring ideas from abroad what people have been doing on healthcare. Compare it with America. Compare it with India and Indonesia. And I hope that people in the industry themselves we start talking about it, and discussing and how we can make sure the healthcare industry will thrive and prosper for the future for us for our kids. Because education and healthcare are two inalienable rights for all citizens in this country. We are born in this country. We are born and then this is our land. Yep. I want to make sure the government take care of us education while healthcare. And uh, Ibn Khaldun, he wrote from Glamenon, Mukadima. He said that the sovereignty of a government, of a nation, comes from the people. And his meaning the uh, intellectual capital. And this comes from inclusive education and justice for all. So a strong government comes from strong people. A strong people come from providing them with education and health. So, so in other words, the government that we have is a reflection of the people. And I also wrote on welfare. How welfare will not bankrupt the government, but make the country more prosperous. So it's, a, it's based on a study by the Columbia University. It's a 125 years timeline study. So they notice when governments spend more on uh, social net, on health and education, the GDP will expand tremendously 10 years after that. When the government cuts spending, the GDP will slowly not grow. It. So that's a study on welfare too in the book. Okay. Anybody who wants to be the government should read the book. <laughs> ah, yeah. But that's the idea. I hope it will be yeah. further discussed, expound, and hopefully uh, spill over to the policy sphere for the big same changes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else you want to say? Everybody counts. Everybody counts. Let's do something. Yay, thank you very much. Okay.